Basic training is like a forked stick propping up a banana tree, which allows a heavy bunch of bananas to mature and ripen at the right moment without falling prematurely to the ground, leaving it all behind. On a clear and cloudless Asalha full moon day in July, at the age of thirty-six, Mei Gao knelt before the monks and nuns at Wat Nong Nong and, without regret, left behind everything that embodied her former life everything that she considered herself to be. By taking part in an age-old ritual of grace and simplicity, she declared herself to be a Mechi, a rightfully ordained Buddhist nun. Mei Gao arrived at the monastery in the early morning to start her initiation. She greeted the resident nuns with a nervous smile and sat respectfully to one side, joining them for an austere meal. Finally, Mei Gao's long-awaited dream of living a life of noble equanimity and detachment was being realized. One by one, the distinguishing marks of her old identity were stripped away. Soon she was squatting anxiously at the well, with butterflies fluttering in her stomach, her neck extended forward as the head nun, Mei Chi Dang, deftly maneuvered a pair of blunt scissors across her head, chopping off lumps of long black hair until only a bristly, uneven stubble remained. As hair piled up around her feet, Mei Gao stared down dispassionately and reflected on the illusory nature of the human body. Hair is not me. It is not mine. Hair, like the rest of the body, is merely a part of nature, a part of the natural physical universe. It belongs to the world, not to me. It is not in any way essential to who I am. With a finely tapered razor, honed to precision by constant use, Mei Chi Dang methodically shaved off swaths of dark stubble, revealing the glistening skin of Mei Gao's scalp and the domed curvature of her skull. Mei Gao ran the palm of her hand over the smooth surface of her scalp, smiling, letting go. The other nuns busily gathered around and dressed her in the traditional bleached white robes of a Mei Chi, a wraparound skirt that hung freely at the shins, a loose-fitting long-sleeved blouse buttoned at the neck, and a flowing length of cloth that tucked under the right armpit and draped neatly over the left shoulder, a characteristic Buddhist gesture of reverence. Mei Gao prostrated three times before Ajahn Kampan, the senior monk who presided over her ordination. Clasping candles, incense, and a lotus flower in her joined palms, she took the Lord Buddha as her refuge. Bhutang Sarnangotami. She took the Tamma, the transcendent essence of the Buddha's teaching, as her refuge. Tamang Sarananga Tami, and she took the Sangha, the community of noble monks and nuns, as her refuge. Sangkang Sarananga Tami. Then, after establishing a serious and thorough resolve to fully commit herself to the training rules, she formally recited the basic precepts of a Mechi in front of the entire assembly. She vowed to refrain from harming living creatures, taking what is not given, all sexual conduct false speech, taking intoxicants, eating after midday, partaking in entertainment and using cosmetics, and using high beds in luxurious seats. When Mei Gao finished intoning the training rules, Ajahn Kampan looked directly at her and advised her to listen carefully while he explained each guiding precept in detail. For all Buddhists, taking refuge in the Buddha, Tamma, and Sangha is the first and most elemental act on the Buddhist path to freedom. The Buddha is the ideal of spiritual perfection and the teacher of the true path to attain it. By taking refuge in the Buddha, you take that ideal as your teacher. You also pledge not to seek false spiritual ideals. The Tamma is the true path to spiritual perfection and the essence of that perfect truth. By taking refuge in the Tamma, you take that truth as your goal. You also pledge to avoid wayward paths and false teachings. The Sangha is the embodiment of that essential truth in those who walk the path to attain spiritual perfection. By taking refuge in the Sangha, you take the Buddhist community as your safeguard. You also pledge to avoid the company of fools and wrongdoers. In this way, taking refuge in the triple gem of Buddha, Tamma, and Sangha involves a commitment to proper spiritual ideals, as well as a fundamental sense of restraint. The triple refuge is the foundation to genuine freedom. The training rules create the conditions and set the parameters for walking the path that leads to liberation. Maintaining them religiously frees the mind from guilt and remorse, and has a strong protective quality, warding off danger. 
To begin with, you must never kill another living creature, no matter how small, nor should you incite others to kill or oppress. Every living being values its life, so you must not destroy that intrinsic value by putting an end to the very life that a being holds dear. Instead, let compassion for all living creatures fill your heart. You should never steal another's possessions or encourage others to do so. All beings cherish their possessions. Even things that do not appear to have much value are nonetheless valued by their owner. Therefore, nothing belonging to another person should be debased by theft. Such actions debase not only the possessions, but people's hearts as well. So, let charity and openness be your guiding principles. From now on, you must abstain from all sexual relations, leading an entirely celibate life. Sexual energy and the passion it arouses destroy tranquility of body and mind, and run counter to the goal of a spiritual life. Let the energy of pure love and devotion arise in its place. You must abstain from lying and always tell the truth. Never be dishonest or deceitful in your speech or actions. Lies undermine trust and cause people to lose all respect for each other. Let the power of truth free your mind. The final four precepts represent principles of spiritual training that help create the conditions for a calm body and a clear mind. To that end, you must never consume alcoholic beverages or any form of intoxicant that muddles the mind and impairs good judgment. Solid food must not be eaten after midday. You must abstain from singing, dancing, and other forms of entertainment, and not adorn yourself with jewelry and flowers, or beautify yourself with perfume and cosmetics. You must avoid sleeping on high beds with soft mattresses, or sitting on ornately decorated seats with soft cushions. By conscientiously observing these eight precepts, you temporarily close the door to, on the household life. You temporarily close the door on the household life and open a window onto the path of liberation. Keep in mind that the real purpose of observing them is to embody their basic principles in all you think, say, and do. In that way you can train the mind to sever the fetters that bind you to the cycle of repeated birth and death. Practicing the precepts not only puts a stop to evil, but also promotes the cultivation of all that is good. By restraining the mind and shutting the door on harmful behavior that leads to pain and suffering, and by promoting the purity of mind and action that leads to liberation, these training rules provide the essential foundation for all Buddhist practice. As such, they form the basis for all monastic discipline. Always remember that the training rules are part of the path to spiritual liberation, so practice them diligently, with the dignity and respect they deserve. Having inspired the candidate and motivated her with a sense of purpose, Adan Kampan chanted a formal blessing to sanctify the occasion and confirm her new status as a fully ordained Mechi. With that, Mechi Gao had finally fulfilled her lifelong ambition.